Hello, and welcome to this video, which involves solving through another example of calculating the electric field from multiple source charges. In this particular video, we're going to be reviewing the problem that we began in class of the doubly ionized water molecule, which is the subject of this particular paper. If you think back to what we did in class, one of the first steps in analyzing these types of situations was to sort of get a feel for the problem, to, as I was saying, do the physics first. And a part of that is just figuring out what the field is doing at the point of interest. So in this particular case, we're interested in what is the direction of the electric field at the location of the oxygen. Before we get into solving it, we're just going to think about things a little bit. So we have our two hydrogens, the one on the left and the one on the right. And the one on the left is making an electric field that does kind of like that. And the one on the right is making an electric field that does kind of like that. If we look at these two electric field lines, we can see that at the location of the oxygen molecule, they are going to add up and give us a net electric field that points straight up. Now that we know that the electric field at the location of the oxygen atom is going to point straight up, we can move on to our main problem, which is what actually is the electric field at the location of that oxygen atom. So again, as we discussed in class, the first thing we're going to do before we jump into any numbers or formulae or anything like that is to think about the problem and do the physics. We're trying to separate the physics and the math. So physically, what's going on in here? Well, I want to know what is the electric field at the oxygen atom. So again, I like to identify what I'm looking for. Circlet helps keep me on track. Now I'm going to think about, in words, what's going on. This is a very important step that I see a lot of people skip. They like to jump right into equations. No, actually write out, in words, what's going on in the situation. This will tell you what to do when you get around to solving the problem. So in this particular problem, I have two hydrogen ions creating their own electric fields. The hydrogen ion on the left creates an electric field at the oxygen that points like that. And the, elect the hydrogen on the right creates a field at the oxygen that points up and to the left. The total field is the vector sum and points, as we've already seen, straight up. Do not forget this step. It is really, really valuable to help you see what to do. Because now that I've already written down what's physically going on, I can look at what I've written and determine what to do. So looking at this, let's see, I have two hydrogens. I've got the one on the left creating an electric field. So that'll be my first step. Find the electric field from the hydrogen ion on the left using, we know the formula for electric field. Then find the electric field from the hydrogen ion on the right. And then the third step, add as vectors. 
looking at step three, I can sort of mo see that, oh, for step one, I'm going to probably want to split into components. And similarly, after two. So now let's move on and just follow our procedure. We've done all of the physics. We've done all of the physics here. In fact, you can get credit on your exam just for doing these pieces and writing them out. You're not full credit, but you can get some credit on the exam just for doing those steps. So now let's go on and just follow our plan. Step one was to find the electric field from the hydrogen atom on the left. All right. So we know E is... We know what Q is going to be. Q is going to be the charge of the probe. And R is going to be the real physical distance. In this case, the 0.1 nanometers. And that would give me my electric field, plugging in those numbers. Following my plan, 1A was finding components. The instant I start talking about components, I need a coordinate system. So let's go ahead and make one, rather traditional one with x pointing to the left and y pointing upwards. Notice we are only focusing on this one atom, the hydrogen on the left. So I might even draw my picture in such a way to just focus on that. So I'm just going to have my hydrogen here. I'm going to have, there's my R. Like that. And I know the whole angle is 105 degrees, which means this angle here is going to be 52 and a half degrees. Notice I'm doing one thing at a time. I'm not even looking at that second hydrogen. I'm doing just one thing at a time. So moving on, E. So moving on to so moving on to find the components, we see that the x component is opposite the angle. So we have sine gives us the x component. where EH is still whatever this number is, and Y is going to be the cosine. Now my actual field points like that, so both of these components should be positive. Now I have done step 1a. Now let's repeat. Step 2, repeat it for the hydrogen atom on the right. Same expression. Hey, q is the same. is the same. So the two E's are going to be the same as each other. Awesome. I wouldn't even need to put something into my calculator. Benefit of working in symbols. So now we move on to splitting into components. I again draw myself a picture, just focusing on the one I care about. My field 
goes off this way. That's still 52 and a half degrees. My x component is still opposite. So E hydrogen on the right x is still sine. And the y component is still cosine. And we can see this time that my field points upwards, so my y component's positive, but also to the left, so my x component is negative. Now I have done steps one and step two. The last thing to do is step three, which is add everything together vectorially. So the total x component will be the x component of the hydrogen on the left plus the x component of the hydrogen on the right. So that's going to be plus. minus for the one on the right gives us zero which we actually already knew way back when we started the problem from that multiple choice question so we get what we should and what we expect now we can move on to the more interesting one In this case, the two values are the same, so it just doubles. And we're done. E, the total thing squared would be. That's zero, so the total electric field is just this concludes this video.